Yep, God forgives. Please keep that in mind as we go into this teaching here, because it's a heavy one. But anyway, Jesus has heavy truth, but heavier truth really sets you free and deepens your walk with God. So it's really good. Now, remember in the last one, we talked about Jesus is talking to the crowds and the Pharisees came up and trapped him. By the way, Mark never did say like Matthew did and Luke did. He didn't really in almost ever, he didn't say what he was saying in the teachings in the crowds. He kind of skipped all that, which is not to say it was not important. Of course it was important, but he, he, he focused on other things. But we don't know what he was teaching in these crowds. Excuse me, probably the kingdom of God, like he's been teaching. But I love to know all those words of what he was saying. Probably talked about the forgiveness of God, too. But anyway, um, so the Pharisees came up and they kind of questioned Jesus um, about marriage divorce, particularly divorce. Divorce, if you don't know, is where, let's say these two right here, we have a couple who are married. Yeah, they love each other. Yes. <laughs> and by the way, all these are Christian couples. <laughs> all right, but anyway, and so divorce is when one of them decides that they don't want to be with the other and that's a divorce. Very painful. And, uh, and so a lot of divorce nowadays. It's changed over the decades, over the years. And uh, God wants to restore that back. And so what I have mainly to talk to you about is you and your future. Not so much about the past and not so much about people that you know, maybe your parents and other people that divorce each other. God forgives, you know, but his plan was never to have divorce. And there's a, if you listen to all these videos and you, and you do them, uh, I can guarantee you'll have way more of a chance in your life as an adult when you grow up and if you are an adult and you're listening to this, uh, this is not a condemning message because God forgives. So it's really important to get that in, in, in your heart and all God does forgive. Um, there's also people that disagree with each other. There's one side of the church that says this, the other side of the church says this. Some people say this, I have different, different opinions. And I'm still developing my opinion on this, but let's get into this. Let's see what Jesus' opinion was especially. Um, the Pharisees came to him and asked him, is it lawful, is it okay, is it right for a man to put away his wife? Is it okay for a man to divorce his wife? Him, her, him, him, her, him, her, him, her, him, her. Notice it says man putting away. Jesus later says that women can put away, but that's not the thinking, especially in that society. Although the Romans kind of said it was okay for women to do it, but in the Jewish community particularly, and there is, they, the women did divorce their men, but it's rare and, and it's harder. But anyway, this one says, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Now, first of all, that word put away is divorce, you know, like put away, like put you out of my life and go. <laughs> and, um, that's not God's will. Mar Malachi chapter 2, I'll probably quote this verse a lot. And near the end of Malachi, it, uh, chapter 2, in that chapter, it says, I hate, this is God saying, putting away. He hates divorce. He doesn't like it. Now, there are times for it, but it should be exceptions and not the rule. But here's the point. They're saying, is it lawful for a man to put his way, his wife. By the way, in Matthew's account of this very story, it says for every cause, like for anything. And that was really what the question, especially that these guys are saying, what's the reasons, Jesus? And that's where it becomes a trap. Uh, the Pharisees were trying to trap Jesus into voicing his opinion. And if, if he says the wrong thing, uh, then some people are not gonna like him. If he actually says the wrong thing and says, uh, no, it's not right to divorce, then he's in Perea. Remember that, that area that I showed you last time? He's in that ge geographical uh, position right here. And over the time that I've taught, do you remember who's over uh, Perea? It was Herod Antipas, who was also over this area. And he was over this area. And do you remember what Her Herodias, the wife of Herod, did to or wanted to do with John the Baptist and why he was put in a prison? John was saying it's not lawful for you to have divorced and taken your brother's wife, Philip, to Herodias. So he, I think the Pharisees and Perea was saying that, let's get him over here. And then there, he's in that Perea area and jurisdiction, the, the leader over there, the king, the, what they call client king, not a literal king, but the leader, the ruler of that area is Herod. 
and they were hoping that maybe word will spread and Herod would come down here and put him into prison off of his head like they did John the Baptist. Whoa. <laughs> so it's a trap. All right, well, that could be one reason, but if not, they also wanted to get a lot of the crowd who was listening. He's talking, he's doing it right in front of the crowds, trying to catch him, the, the Pharisees. Well, Jesus, is it lawful? Rabbi, you teacher, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And they were testing him, the Bible says. Yeah, so what's he going to say? If he takes one side of opinion, then they won't like it. A lot of them say, well, I don't agree with that. If he sets another side. Now, it's important to know that you've got to tell the truth even if nobody likes it. Truth is truth, and God is a God of truth, and you need to tell the truth. Don't tell lies, and don't back down, and don't ca be a coward and say, well, I don't want to cause people not to like me. They didn't like Jesus. <laughs> they hated Jesus, but he told the truth. He, he, he spoke very strongly and sh shared what, what, what they needed. you got to give what people need, and that is the truth. All right. In that day, there were two schools of thought, two rabbi thinking, like a century or earlier, like if, if this is where Jesus was right here, if you go back a hundred years right here, there were two major rabbis. Um, one is Hillel and the other is Shammai. And Hillel's disciple, he, he had a, t a student named Shammai. And then Shammai, somewhere along the line, I don't know why, but in all, maybe they disagreed, he actually split off and he started his own school of thinking. So you have one group called Hillelites, Hel <laughs> Hillel, and the other is Shammai, and you had two of these major, very popular, very intelligent, educated teachers who had different opinions, and they really different on this particular subject, especially marriage and divorce. And I'm going to share those two main schools, those two ways of thinking of what it was like when Jesus was asked that question and everybody kind of knew it. And they're going, hmm, to Jesus to find out what he said. All right, this is, this is how we're going to end because there's a lot to this. I'll kind of go quick so you can stop it, pause it, go back or whatever. But here it is. There are two main schools of thought. And uh, the main thing that we need to get to and Jesus went to is Deuteronomy 24 verses 1 through 4. This is when it talks about divorce. And, that, and Hillel thought this passage meant one thing and Shammai thought the uh, passage meant one thing. We'll get into the passage later. But let's just go right into it, right uh, into these guys. Uh, by the way, I side right away. I'm going to say I definitely like Shemais better than Hillel. Maybe that uh, when he split from Hillel was because of this. I don't know. But uh, the one reason that he said it's okay to divorce. This is like, is it okay to divorce? Is it lawful? Is it right? And Moses in Book of Deuteronomy, which we'll get into later when Jesus with Jesus answer, uh, he said Moses permitted. He didn't really want it. God didn't want it, but it was also a protection thing that we'll get into later. But anyway, here it is. Shammai uh, said his school of thought was anything indecency, which is basically adultery. I don't know if there's any other thing uh, along that, but he said, yes, it's okay to divorce if, you're, uh, if your wife or husband commits adultery against you. Um, the Christian, by the way, teach Christian views is forgiveness and, and, and reconciliation and person fails, but it's okay if there's divorce with, with um, adultery. Now, adultery for you younger ones, and bear with me, you guys who all know, is you got a couple, all these couples, older couples here, here's an older couple in these, and these younger couples right here, you got couples and um, and let's say one of them, I'll take this one the closest right here, um, I have another couple I'm going to bring out a second. She, uh, she falls into a different trap or he falls into a different trap and one of them commits adultery. They go out with another. This is awful. Sorry, you guys. He, she goes out with him or him and they hook up and, uh oh, not good. Committed adultery. That's committed adultery. They, they did something against their spouse and that's just horrible, horrible thing. It happens a lot, by the way. You don't need to do it when you're older. There's a way. And I'm, by the way, at the end of all this teaching, I'm going to share with you, please listen to all this, not today, but in the last video, I'm going to share how to keep that from happening. And it's almost, it's 99% proof that it won't happen. You can keep it from happening. God has high standards, and, uh, but he also forgives those who do it, but, but he, he wants us to do that. But anyway, he doesn't want adultery. Ugh. He, it's, as a matter of fact, that's the seventh commandment, isn't it? Thou shalt not commit adultery. In other words, split up like 
one of these guys going after you know her and they connect with each other and it hurts these two deeply because that's her part his partner and that's her partner right there and that's how it should be committing adultery is where you go and have an affair with another woman or something not good and that's what they believe Shammai thought well that's a, that's really the reason for divorce and that's the only reason they taught now Hillel was more liberal like <laughs> I, I collected in my research a whole bunch of things that most of the writers said the same stuff and then one added one or one added and I think all of these are uh, some of maybe this is not all the whole list he went on and on at what what divorce could be and it's horrible I'm just saying and people nowadays have reasons that are just are you kidding you divorce because of that are you kidding all right but anyway now child I, I, it's really important that you hear this I don't want you to think about other people that you know, could be your parents, could be friends, neighbors, relatives, cousins, aunts, uncles, whatever. I don't want you to think about all that. I want you to focus on what Jesus is saying and keep your mind on what, what this is all, all about. The real question is not about divorce, is what's the reasons for marriage, not the reasons for divorce. We should focus on marriage. God wants marriage and, and it to, it to be a really healthy whole, whole thing that is beautiful and wonderful and rewarding and fulfilling and satisfying. And it's just a great deepest relationship you can have besides relationship with God is a man and a woman. So young people, listen to me. I want you to focus away from anybody that you know and don't look at them. Focus on what Jesus said and what he wants. And then you prepare yourself so that when you get older, you're not going to have adultery and you're not going to have a divorce. All right, there's ways of doing it. All right, let's go on. So Shammai is indecent saying adultery. Hillel said, quote, for any matter. What? <laughs> for anything? By the way, that's what Matthew said in Matthew 19 when they asked Jesus, is it lawful, uh, is it okay, is it right to divorce a man for, to divorce his wife, put away his wife for any cause, for any reason? They were asking, are you on Hillel's side? That happened to be the most popular in that time. Ugh. That, the divorces were like on Hillel, like, and the men were doing it primarily. There were occasional women who were asking for divorce. It's harder to get, but they did get it. They had certain reasons why they, they said um, for it. But anyway, for anything. And it seems that it was kind of rampant. They said, I'm kind of tired of you. I'm going to pick this one. I fell out of love with you. I'm going to pick this one. That's nowadays what's happening. It's awful. A lot of pain, a lot of drama, and also sin, 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 sin. Really, you shouldn't think about the sin. How do I say this? Let's don't think so much about the sin of divorce. Think about the sin of marrying. You married the wrong person. <laughs> now there's mistakes and all that. Don't forget. God forgive. But the sin of marrying the wrong person, you kind of flubbed up with that. Some it's not sin, but a lot of it is because they didn't really seek God for the answer and all that. They're doing what they wanted and not God's will and your will be done, the Bible says in the prayer. But anyway, here it goes. For any matter, Hillel was saying, when in public, these are just random all over the place, when in public with their head uncovered. What? Yeah, women were supposed to wear a, uh, like a... I can't think of it, you know, something to cover the head, like, you know, a uh, headpiece, a, uh, a robe type thing that you, a scarf type thing is you cover your hair. I'm divorcing you because you let your hair uncovered. And that was a culture at that time. You know, women went out in public, they put things over their hair. All right. Well, that's that. He said, well, that's a good reason to divorce. <laughs> if you, this is over and over, burn a meal, like that's been mentioned by a lot of them or spoiled a meal or inability to cook. You don't, you can't cook. I thought you could cook. I'm divorcing you. I want another one. Another wife. Forget you. Awful. You burn your breakfast. You burn toast. <laughs> Whatever. All right. That's true. They spoil the dish or something. If she forgets to set aside dough, dough meaning like, you know, bread, stuff that makes bread, you make bread from. She forgot to set it aside, getting it prepared. Is that crazy? Another reason was your voice is too loud. Like, it can be heard next door. Your voice is too loud. That was several writers that I read that said that, like if your voice, or two or three of them anyway. Uh, your voice is too loud. You're too loud. You're screaming. Stop screaming. I'm divorcing you. 
you know how many divorces there'd be <laughs> with some of these? You screamed, we're out of here. By the way, I will say this in Deuteronomy, if, in case I forget. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 24, verse 1 through 4. It's in the book of the Bible, the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, last book of the Torah. Um, it said, I, they said, God, I mean, Moses permits you to write a certificate of divorce. They can write up a big thing. I think that was purpose for a rabbi had to write it where they, they had to write it out. They can't just say, I'm done with you, get out. You know, I'm divorcing. You had to go to court. You had to stand in front of people. And they had to write up this whole thing. And maybe the writing would cause them to think about it and help prevent it. Like at the moment of passion, you're mad, I'm going to divorce you. Then later you start thinking about saying, no, I don't want to divorce my wife or something. So they go back, sorry, honey, you know, forgive me. And that's what we need. A lot of forgiveness, a lot of patience, a lot of love. And so as a true disciple in the kingdom of God is going to you know, love people and all that. So the certificate was to help prevent divorces. It wasn't like giving full liberty to do it. It's like, slow down. You have to write it out. Plus, the main reason for the certificate of divorce is for the woman to have it. So she can prove that she did get a divorce so she can't be uh, cause, uh, called an adulteress if, if she went out with another man. He divorced me. All right, so it's a protection thing. Uh, so uh, another one is if you are found fairer, that's a quote. In other words, you become unattractive or they, or you're, or they found another fairer, like not found fairer, uh, found another fairer, more beautiful, awful. So you go, oh, I like her better. I think she's prettier. <laughs> Come on, laugh. That's, that's a joke. It wasn't a joke, though. They really did that. They, that was the reason that hello. Uh, said that I like uh, from what I've studied on Hillel. There's other things I think I've, I've liked about him, but not this. Way too loose. If you're caught spinning a spinning or dancing in the streets, you're you spun around. They, that's a that's an act of divorce. <laughs> this is a crazy. Or talking with a strange man. You're talking with another man in public, and that wasn't a usual, by the way. Uh, not so good. I mean, you know, but the point is, is that you can, okay, I talked with another guy and you're divorcing me. That's, that's how it was. Uh, negligent with purification, you know, uh, a monthly type cycle that they go through and you have to do a pur purification. You're negligent on that. You didn't do well with it. Oh no. Uh, speaking disrespectfully about your in-laws in the, in the, you're speaking disrespectfully about the in-laws, like the woman speaks disrespectfully about his in-laws in his presence. We heard it. She says something about his parents. That's crazy. <laughs> that's insane. But that's a reason for divorce. You spoke negative. You said something bad about my parents. I'm divorcing you. Awful. Um, another one is if she has been barren, doesn't have kids for 10 years, she's not able to have kids for whatever reason. All right, then I'm divorcing you. Oh, that's terrible. What a, I feel so bad for these women. If she used it, if she was quarrelsome, oh well, there goes a lot of families right there. <laughs> like if they're arguing a lot, uh, then if she's arguing, I mean, she's arguing and just nagging and whining and all that, then Hillel said that's a, that's a good reason for divorce. Um, if she burns her toe is what I heard on one of them. I don't know if that's accurate because I didn't even know. She burns your toe. She accidentally burned your toe. Oh my goodness, that's awful. So I go with Shammai. Jesus went with Shammai too, by the way, uh, that, that thinking. But anyway, real quick at the end, before I forget, I wanted to make sure I put this in here. In Jewish law, by the way, a man could not be charged with adultery. A woman could. Um, I mean, it's possible for a man, but typically the man was not charged with adultery. Well, that's a real problem. Adultery is where, again, you go out uh, uh, against your spouse with another woman or with another man. See, the Bible uh, commands them to cleave to your wife. This couple's got it to, right. They love each other. And cleave means kind of glue and cling on to each other, hold on to each other. Because the world would like to tear you apart from each other, uh, from your the person that you've uh, chosen to marry. So, the enemy would like to tear families apart. And it hurts the kids, as you know. It's just so sad. Um, now, again, don't focus on the people around you. Um, just focus on what, how do you keep from 
hap letting this happen. That's later. But I want you to know what Jesus taught here. In a second, we're going to get what Jesus said about it. Well, not this time, but the next, not second, but the next video. So, oh, I plead with you to keep this up. Watch part one, part two, part three. I, I decided to break it up. There's so much here. It's kind of really important to see it. But now uh, you're supposed to cleave together. The enemy would love to divide you. He likes to divide and conquer. He likes to get them mad at each other, mad, 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 mad. He wants abuse happening and everything else to just split. And the devil laughs. Ha, 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 ha. Got it. Yes. And uh, there is a, a power in God to not let that happen. And, uh, and Jesus uh, shares um, what God's intention was in these next videos. So keep listening. Thanks for listening. I hope that was interesting for you. It's shocking, sad, shocking today. Half or more or ending in a divorce a lot of times. It's not God's will. What about the broken heart of God? You know, the heart of God's got to be breaking above of, of relationships. He set it up so wonderfully. And there's a beautiful way if you go God's way. It's a narrow way, but it's possible. And with God's help, you can do it. God bless you. Thanks for listening.